Welcome back to the channel. We got a really cool video today where I'm actually not going to be doing the building. My wife Taylor is, and this is her first time ever doing anything like this. So I think it'll be really cool. And rather than me standing here just talking to a camera, I'll get to explain it to her and you guys can learn through that. I think it'll be a really cool video. So we've got our stack of material here with some cuts laid out and she's going to start breaking everything down into the rough dimension on the miter saw, which is her first time using those tools. So let's get right into it. That goes behind your neck. Okay, we're using ash for the tabletop and the bench top as well. And we've got these broke down to the rough size. Plenty big enough for what we need for our overall table. So we're gonna go ahead and set these aside for now because I actually wanna get started on the legs for both the bench and table because we're gonna have to glue those up and make them thicker because we don't have stock thick enough for what we're wanting. Okay, as you run these through, first we're just gonna focus on getting one face flat so you don't have to worry about running along the fence or anything. But you're gonna start with pressure here and then once you get on this outfeed table, you just always wanna keep the pressure applied on this side of the cutter head. So as you move your hands, just go like this and always keep pressure down on this side to run it all the way through. And then once, you probably have to make a couple passes, we'll see when it's completely flat and then you'll flip that flat side along the fence to square up this edge to match that face. Okay. Again? Just make sure you keep constant pressure down over here. Okay? On that side? Okay, I'm realizing most of my explaining is happening while the machines and dust collectors running where I'm yelling with her. So I don't know how good the video is gonna turn out. Just bear with us. Hopefully I can edit it together pretty good. But now we're gonna take that flat side we just made on the joiner and it's gonna go down on the planer. And that's gonna flatten the top side and make it coplanar or parallel with the bottom. Let's go ahead and rip these wider pieces down to match these and then we'll get them glued together. Rip them? They're kind of thick. <laughs> what? Rip them? <laughs> no? Okay. So make them skinny. Okay, we've got our four table legs. They just need to be glued together. So to conserve on clamps, we're gonna glue them all together at once. You just wanna make sure you're only gluing that piece to that, <laughs> that piece to that, and so on. So you're not gluing all the legs together. 
And we have our two bench, or our four bench legs as well, two on each one still together. So John went to get his glue roller thingy. He said I could start by just using the brush. So we'll try it. I'm not sure how much glue you're supposed to use. Don't oh, find it. A little bit more. See those bare spots? You can't find it? No. So everything needs to be covered. I don't know where my roller is. Now they're still oversized, so we don't have to be too worried about them being perfect. Okay, it's a new day, so we can go ahead and take these out of clamps. You can do that. And then we're gonna get started on gluing up the tabletop and the bench top. And just to explain kind of our process here, my wife is a teacher who's home on holiday break. So we're doing this during our kids' nap time. So we could have two hours or we could have 20 minutes out here. So I'm kind of just trying to get these glue ups done with what time we have. Now on all, we got to joint and plane all these like we did yesterday. So you should have it right. I'll just take a seat, huh? Now for these, we're not really going to take down to any certain thickness either. Since it's a tabletop, we're going to leave it as thick as we can. So we're just going to go until the tops are all flat and then we'll stop. We gotta figure out what layout we want them. Let's see how that is going up. And then that one's going down. Mm -hmm. That one's going down, up, down. You kind of want to rotate it. So like if they were all going that way, as this expansion contracts, the tabletop could do that or warp like this. So by having them opposite, it kind of keeps it flat. As long as it looks good. I mean, you want to do the best you can Obviously, you still want the tabletop to look good. Most of these joints are actually really good. Like that one's really good. That one's good. See this one here, there's a gap here. Mm -hmm. So a trick you can do is we can join them again and we'll put this along the fence like this and we'll close it like a book and then put this face along the fence. So like if you're not running it through perfectly 90 degrees, They'll cancel out and still come together tight. Okay, see, so we could put like biscuits or dominoes or dowels in them to keep them aligned, but they're honestly pretty flat and the joints are looking good and we're on a time crunch. So I think we'll just go ahead and try to glue it up. So just snug them up. You don't want to crank down on them too much because then you'll cause the 
tabletop the bow. Clamps are the expensive thing, I think, as a beginner. I mean, like you could build a table with a miter saw and table saw, but trying to glue stuff up, clamps aren't cheap. Okay. All right, with that drying, we can go ahead and start on the legs again. Let's set these up like we're actually gonna, how we want them. Like with the best looking sides on the outside corners. And then we're gonna cut a taper on the two inside edges. Like these seams turned out really good actually. And you shouldn't see them anyway when we dye them black. But I'd go ahead and put like the. Wait, these are two pieces of wood. I know, right? Look at that, it's right there, but you can barely tell. We did good. It's pretty good. So I'm just going to put a big X on the inside faces where we're going to cut the taper. Just keeps us from getting them messed up. And then our taper is going to start at four inches from the top. So we're going to cut these. What's a taper, I guess? It's gonna, we're gonna do a half inch taper. So the next thing we're gonna do is measure in a half inch on the bottom. And then I'll show you, we're gonna have to make a jig, but it's gonna cut from this mark to four inches in at an angle. Mm. Okay. On this board, we're gonna line that four inch up and then you wanna mark to where you can see a half inch on the bottom, just like that. Oh. Okay. So another new tool to use. We're gonna make grooves that the clamp slide in to hold this to our jig. Okay, I clamped this square on here so you can ride the base of the router right along there. And I feel like you haven't really been scared of any of these tools, but it's good to have a healthy respect for them. And like, this is definitely one that you wanna always be aware of what you're doing. You'll turn it on. It's got a good break, so it'll stop pretty quick. But with this, if you need to stop for whatever reason, you're not gonna be able to pull it off. So you're just gonna stop and shut it off. But you should be fine. Just go with a steady pace, push it all the way through and make sure you just, you don't set it down or anything, shut it off, okay? And for this, you'll probably want a dust mask, so we'll get you one of those. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, that's a messy one. So what that did is made it so we can run this right back through there and we know it's cutting exactly on this. So now we can take our pieces and just line them up. Mm. Clamp them down and we know it's gonna cut right along the edge of this. Looks a lot better than that, doesn't it? Okay, one more cut we need to make. I usually use my biscuit joiner and to cut slots to use these tabletop fasteners, but thinking ahead, it's not gonna fit in here to do it afterwards. 
So we're just gonna make a groove on all the pieces on the table saw first. It's just another way to do it. So this is upside down, so pretend this is a tabletop. So that will screw down into the tabletop and go in there. Okay. And then it will allow the top to still expand and contract. And then on the other sides, it can go in and out too. I gotcha. Okay, I've been debating on how I want you to put these together. Like we can either do the pocket hole screws, we can do dowels. And I'm actually think I'm gonna try something I've actually never done, I don't think, and we're gonna do dowels and a pocket hole screw to pull it together and act as our clamps. Since it's a big table, we don't have to fuss with clamps. So first we need to mark our dowels and we'll get those drilled. Set that, what's half a three quarter? I have no idea. Taylor. I'd have to think about it. All right, well, thank Come on. <laughs> Why are you putting me on oh, the spot? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do I do three? Okay, I can do that stuff. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we need to mark the center of the legs, and these are two and a half. Don't do me mad. They are half of two and a half. <laughs> Change that. One and a quarter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to drill the dowel holes, we're going to use this called the Brad Point drill bit. It's got a point on the end. But just to make it easier than trying to line that point right up, I like to take an awl first. And it's a lot easier just to line it right up on there and make a hole. So then when you go to drill, you just put that in there and it's dead accurate every time. Now we're ready to drill these and you can use this block to help keep your bit straight. What's that for? It's no, to know where to stop. So we're going three eighths to this one. Okay. You can look right at your hole, get that point in it. Bring that down, get it held flat, and then just drill until that tape hits the block. Now the last thing to do, we're just going to put one pocket hole right in between both those holes. Just make sure you're drilling it on the side with the groove. Now's going to be a good time to put on your audio book because you're going to do some sanding for an hour. It's easier just to pre-sand everything. Or you can lay it down flat on the table instead of afterwards. And we'll just have to do some touch-ups and stuff and clean up glue after it's assembled. Turn it on when it's off the wood and just put it on and just keep it flat. Don't like tilt it up, try to dig in. Just keep it flat. Don't sit in one spot, just keep it moving. Okay. Start with 80 grit and we're gonna go 120, 150, 220. So what's the goal, just smooth? Yep, here I'll show you. Take a pencil, just light, don't like dig into the wood. Just sand until the pencil line's going. Okay. Okay, we can start by just, we'll just put a little bit of glue in the holes and then hammer in the dowels and then just put a skinny strip of glue right in the middle. You don't want to do too much because we don't want it squeezing out, making a mess. So just a little bit. And then like if we were to dry fit it right now, it'd go together pretty easy. But as soon as these get wet with glue, they'll swell up and it might be kind of hard for you. I might have to help you, I don't know. But as soon as you get them pushed together, 
Then you'll just drive your one screw and that'll be your clamp. Uh, how far down? Until it stops. Okay, <laughs> let's turn that down. <laughs> Use the mallet. <laughs> Do you want it on this side? Easy, just like tap. You know. There you go. Is that good? Yeah, more. Keep going. One more. All right. Do you want it like that, or we could just lay it down? Probably like that. Okay. Oh, there's a hole in it. <laughs> I was doing the wrong one. What? I was doing that screw, and there's a screw in it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so while the, before the glue fully sets up, you see like, I know my workbench, like this black part is square. Mm -hmm. So I line these two legs up like this. Okay. Then you look and how it's sitting, it's like an eighth inch out of square. Mm -hmm. So we can just pull that. Mm. So now our base is squared exactly how it's sitting. Just let that glue set up and it should sit like that. Mm. And we'll put our blocks in the corners as well. Okay, we got the bases all cleaned up and we still have some time to work today. So we decided we're gonna go ahead and try to get the bases dyed. And for this, we're using Speedball Super Black India ink. And since this is oak with all the open grain, we're just using a rag and trying to really work it in into all those open pores. Ready to finish this thing? You wanna keep the gun straight like this. Okay. And move your body, you don't wanna Move your wrist like that. You don't want to hold it like this. Straight down and walk with it. Just keep a steady pace. Well, probably about seven or eight inches. And then you want to spray 50% of that again. Uh, when you start and stop on the trigger, don't start it while it's on the wood. Start spraying off and finish off. Don't spray like out in the room, but just a couple inches just Start it. Well, you're going to want a mask and <laughs> let me turn the filters on. You 
can stop. Yeah. All right, not bad for your first time, I think, on the second coat after this dries. The only thing I would work on more is just making sure you're keeping your gun 90 degrees and just work on being smooth instead of you're kind of going like this. And when you get over here, you can let go of it because like you're really heavy on the ends for some reason. So it's okay to stop and then press again and go. So just be smooth, stop. Smooth stop. What? A video of me doing this? Sure. Well, what do you think? I love it. Was it fun? Oh, yeah. You feel a sense of pride? Uh huh. Do you? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm excited. I have to show up. I think we do need to do another one. We had some technical difficulties. Just with someone, the drill. Well, someone did turn on her microphone. <laughs> the second day, someone put on her microphone on her vest and then immediately took her vest off. And most of her questions and my explanations were while the machines were running. So I don't know if I'm even going to be able to include most of that in the video. But the table turned out good. I had fun. I'm a newbie. Yeah. Close this out. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. And what else? Thanks for watching. Good. Good. With my double thumbs up.